Well, welcome back to the program. Our good friend, the privacy professor, Rebecca, Rebecca Harold is here. And uh, there's a lot of people talking about this whole iPhone deal that is happening. You've seen it in the news. We're going to try to make heads or tails of it right now. What is going on and why it's so complex? Yes. Now, yeah. this all started when uh, the government wanted access to someone's phone right. to get some records off it. Right. And Apple said, no, we, we can't do that. Well, and I think it's important to look at the facts around the situation that led to where we're at at this point in time. So we're dealing with a very emotional situation. Mm -hmm. We had terrorists who killed a lot of people and they want to get all the data that they can. Yeah, it was their phone. We're, we're, we're their talking phone. about right. the San Bernardino shootings. The San Bernardino right. shootings. Mm -hmm. So um, what needs to be known is the terrorist had many different types of computing devices. The phone that they want is the phone that was issued to them by their employer. They also had their own personal phones that they threw in the lake um, and they also had computers so the government, the FBI, has gotten that data. Now some of it was destroyed by water but still they've gotten all that data plus they have the data from the phone in question from the point in time where it was last backed up to the iCloud in mid-October. So there's just a small, about a month or so, a little over a month's time, of time when data might have been added to a work phone, not a personal phone, that's an that's a important point, um, that they want to get to. Now what do they have from that point in time? that they can't see on the phone itself, they have the metadata. Metadata can tell you a lot. The metadata can actually show them who they've been communicating with during that time that they say they need that data. Right. And they've looked at that metadata. And you know, I've combed through, there's thousands of reports out there about this now. And from what I found, they're saying that that metadata is not pointing to anything that would give them additional information. And also, given the fact that most people's work phones now are used differently than your own personal phone, right. it, it's telling me, you know, we need to do a risk analysis. What do we need to do? Do we really need to get more data from a phone that metadata isn't pointing to the need to break? And also, um, Where's the additional data that may be with the employer that might be related to that? If it was work for, uh, used for work, mm -hmm. most businesses now, when they issue phones to their employees, there's a certain amount of backing up and also logging of activity. And another key point is, why didn't the um, terrorists try to destroy that phone as well when they went to links to try to destroy these other devices and other computing systems. So, you know, that's that's an important big picture to think about. Now, what are what are they being asked for? What is Apple being asked for? Because when you hear it in sound bites, they're saying, well, we want the code. That's what's being demanded from them. We want the code. Like the back door to get into an right. Apple device. So and, and, what does that sound right. like? Code? And some people, yeah. want it, it sounds like you need access to that phone. So just give me the code that will get us into that one particular phone and look at that one they particular phone. They do have a phone. subpoena for the phone. Mm -hmm. They have a, well, and the phone is fine, but what, do, what, when you hear the word code, what do you think of? Maybe a password. Four? Yes. What they're actually demanding is that they engineer a completely new system that will go into this system on this phone, which there's probably around, and my research shows maybe 12 million, 10 to 12 million other systems like this phone. Okay. They want to create, engineer a new system that will go in and be able to break the security that has been built into the system that's running this phone. So I think on you know on the surface you hear well it's only one phone and you hear that mm -hmm. from a lot of the investigators and the politicians. Yes, it's only one phone, but you have to consider that that one phone has an operating system that was created with great security and we need security because we're having more breaches all the time. Think of it, our smartphone is an extension 
of our personal self. We have more data that's being collected on that phone that we even realize, mm -hmm. and not only of us, but also of the people around us, our family, our friends in the vicinity. So these phones are, are collecting a lot of data, so we need that security. So what's being demanded isn't just a PIN, it's not just a, a password, it's telling to Apple, we want you to build a brand new system that will be able to break the system that you built to be very secure. And that that's technically right now does not exist. It does not exist. So this would this affect the phones that are already in use or anything further that goes further? Well, and that's where, you know, the um, the investigators are saying, well, just build the code. And Apple has said it's going to take anywhere from six to 10 engineers, anywhere from two to four weeks to build code that's going to break very good security. Mm -hmm. So you have to build it first. It does not exist. Um, but after you do, during the course of building a brand new system, when you build it, you're going to have copies of that system by those who are building it, who are making sure that it works, and so on. So the FBI is saying, well, just do away with it when you're done. We don't even want that because, you know, we only want what might be on this phone, which they don't really have any indication that there's any Anything. data on there. The terrorists are dead. There's no immediate threat right now, is there? We have all this other data. So they're wanting them to do that, and they're saying it's just this one phone. But, you know, there may be 10 to 12 other million You're other phones. Pandora's box. Right, because now you have code and you also have many other investigators who have locked phones right now. I think the current count is around 175 other phones that investigators and law enforcement has that says, oh, well, we're waiting to see, you know, if this case goes through, if, if they can compel Apple to create code that's going to break strong security, what's going to stop them from doing it again? For and other cases. For other cases and for other operating systems. So now just think about the precedent. You are telling a private company that you have to create a tool that's going to undo the security that you spent so much time building into these phones that truly are extensions of our personal wow. selves. And we're, we're only getting more you know, computerized types of things. Now, can you imagine the security, you know, those of us out there in the security and privacy field, we're trying to tell engineers, build security in, build in privacy controls. Your car is gonna have a lot of data about you. Things in your house are gonna have a lot of data about you. And right now there's not a lot of good security. When we get them to the point where they're building security into these devices, now what's going to stop the, uh, the investigators from saying, well, you have to go build now, whoever the manufacturer is, something to break this. And I think a very important thing is the United States is not the only country that builds security tools, <laughs> that builds encryption, that builds other types of security. Other countries do too. So even if we build this and if Apple's forced to do this, we can go get security tools from other countries. That means terrorists can get security tools from other countries. That's just right. a fact. So it, it so really would not do anything. So you, your personal anything. stance wow. with this is with Apple, correct? You want you want to make sure this doesn't happen. Well, it's with technology, yeah. And I think you know, as you can probably seen in the headlines, a lot of the other technology companies because they know and understand what's going on technology you know, they can realize it's very emotional. This one phone, it's all we want. But the impact of that is it, it builds a precedent and now they might be asked to create that. In the meantime, the ones who are hiding information are just going to use other really good security yeah. from other places. It's already started. I mean, there's one app, I can't remember the name of it, but already 100 million people have downloaded an encryption app that people are using on their phones now so that even if somebody breaks into the security of the operating system. There's another encryption. There's, it's going to be encrypted. Wow. And of course, Tim yeah. Cook from uh, CEO of Apple said he's going to fight this all the way to Supreme Court. So we'll have yeah. to stay yeah. tuned to see mm -hmm. what happens. All right. So uh, obviously very complicated. So security, yeah. very important. And you have all the information you need for security in your business or personal. Yes, definitely. Uh, you can send me a question at privacyguidance.com. I also have uh, privacyprofessor.com. And uh, several different business sites. I try to help businesses to understand 
technology and how it impacts privacy and what can be done to protect privacy because we're getting more and more breaches every day. We don't want less security. Uh, we want more, but we want to do things and have data like metadata mm -hmm. that can point to um, evidence that can be helpful. There it is. Wonderful. Thanks Thank for the you very much. Appreciate You're that. You're welcome.